Hello, it's Crane here with a non-missile bolt missile build that you can play on full manual aim and a small preview for the boosters breakdown. I will show you something cool you can do with your boosters. This is a build you can run for both PvE and PvP. Alright, let's get the other gear pieces out of the way first. This is a flexible build where you can choose your own missiles depending on the mission. No hard restrictions, so you'll see me swap them around for PvE and PvP. I do have a particular setup I use for PvP though, but let me get into that in a second. I'm going to keep most of the optimization for this one brief. For the headpiece, I'm using the Veros because it's just above average on all stats. For the chest piece, I'm using the Mine Alpha because, once again, it's just above average on all stats, with no particular weaknesses. Both of these pieces have above average cost though, but I am doing this on purpose, which you will see in a moment. I am, in fact, trying to weigh myself down without too much weight. For the arms, I have selected the Basho arms. These arms are known for their very high melee specialization, but poor recoil and tracking. However, since we're a missile build, we don't care about any of that. Instead, we are going to focus solely on the defensive capabilities of the arm. And the Basho arms absolutely excel at this, having quite a decent overall defensive score. But more than that, it is light in weight and low in energy load cost, making these arms the best arms in terms of defense score to cost density. The FCS is obviously the missile FCS, and I'm using the VP20C generator. Okay, now the big question and key point about this build is really the legs and the booster. For the legs, I have opted to use reverse joints for their jumping power for kiting and ascending, instead of going for tetrapods or the floaty tank legs. This is mainly to play a different type of build that just feels a lot faster and more interactive. If you're running some of the heavier missiles or you want to be tankier with some of the other gear pieces, you will need to run the spring chicken. This mostly happens for me in PvE sometimes when I'm trying stuff out, but for PvP, I have a fixed setup that I am introducing now for the booster trick. I run two aperitifs, a laser drone, and a vertical plasma missile launcher. Therefore, I can easily afford to use the mine beta legs. As for the boosters, there is a very specific reason why I picked the grid walker with my particular setup with this particular weight. As a bonus for watching my build video, which is definitely not as popular as my breakdowns, let me give you a preview and detailed example on using some tips that will be in my booster and leg breakdowns. I think most people realize that the act of quick boosting on the ground combines the jump power of your legs and the quick boost of your boosters. Reverse joints have an inherently different jump type versus bipedal legs. This is not only because of the higher jump distance. Reverse joints simply have a floatier jump, whereas bipedal legs are stuck pretty close to the ground. Now, the other factor that influences your jump is your quick boost thrust and quick boost jet duration. Lowering these can indeed lead to a faster jump recovery for reverse joints, as many people have probably figured out, but not by a whole lot. Although, this does mean that having low quick boost thrust and quick boost jet duration is not a detriment for a reverse joint build. In fact, we're fine with keeping these numbers as low as possible to make way for other stats. This suits a reverse joint leg build much better. The two other stats that we want to be taking a look at to make the most perfect jump is the quick boost reload time and the quick boost reload ideal weight. The longer your quick boost reload time, the longer before you can quick boost again. But because of the floaty nature of your reverse joints, having too short of a quick boost reload isn't great when combined with low quick boost thrust and duration. Take the gills for example. You can flop in the air like a fish out of water, but you're barely dodging right? Even with higher thrust like the Alula, you can clearly see a grounded jump being much better thanks to the reverse joint's excellent jumping capabilities. 
The other stat that has an influence over your quick boost reload time is the quick boost reload ideal weight. What this stat does is it increases your quick boost reload time when your total AC weight, which includes your legs weight, goes over the stated number. Take note that it doesn't use your load limit or current load, which does not include your legs weight. Going a bit higher than the ideal weight slightly nerfs your quick boost time, but going a lot higher than the ideal weight and your reload time starts getting nerfed quickly. Also, this stat only affects the quick boost reload and not the speed of the quick boost. I understand that a lot of people will tell you to choose a booster that is relatively closer to your quick boost ideal weight or stay in bound. I have heard this advice myself and largely disregarded this rule. I have ignored this suggestion so many times to select the truly best booster for each build that I kind of lost count. And this build here is one of the best living demonstrations. Not only will I go over the ideal weight, I will make it work for me. While the pieces I have selected might not seem too special, you are about to witness a very special effect. I have purposely repurposed my AC to be exactly this much heavier than the quick boost ideal weight. Why? It is because 1.27 seconds is the exact amount of time my AC requires to land again. Therefore, if I am spamming dodge on a flat floor, my AC takes off with a grounded jump and not a floppy air jump the moment it touches the ground again. You might think I'm messing with you, but I kid you not. Let's swap to the Zimmermans for one of my weapons, which would make my quick boost reload time 1.26 seconds. And this is what happens when you do queue up a quick boost. The AC will not have enough time to land, and you do a flimsy jump. So yes, quick boost ideal weight is but a mere suggestion. Do not be fooled by it, and you can even make it work for you instead of against you. This is also why the Gridwalker is not only good but perfect for this build. We can take disadvantages such as low quick boost thrust and duration, and long quick boost reload time and low ideal weight and make it work for us. While making use of the booster's weaknesses with our reverse joint jump, we are also awarded with its strengths. The grid walker has a relatively high thrust, one of the most important booster stats. This means that our base movement speed is fast, which is needed for a kiting build. We also have the fastest upward thrust speed for when we need to ascend to get out of harm's way in combination with our reverse joints jumps. And with a quick arena warm up, I will go into this build's PvE and PvP showcase and commentary, which I will also talk a bit more about some manual aiming advice. Like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the little preview for the booster video. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me. Alright, let's go and S rank probably one of the most difficult PvE missions without a boss. Since we're using the VP20C generator, we don't want to redline if possible. If you're struggling on S ranking, try using this build. One thing about free aiming is you don't have to face your enemy, so you have a lot more freedom of mobility. You're able to look wherever you want instead of, you know, the circle locking straight to one target with hard lock. For missiles, you don't have to lock on in the traditional sense where, you know, your reticle has to be on. As long as the target is on your screen, you're fine. Ok, 
Okay, regen our energy and go up again. We can fly a bit more here, jump a bit more and fly a bit more when when we need to because these things are very strong on the ground as you probably know already. Even in the air we still have to watch out for their missiles. really just a lot of spamming missiles and the guidance of these missiles are good enough that even if these PvE mobs move faster than PvP players they're gonna track like that so you see you see the missiles curve as long as they're locked on it's pretty difficult to escape missiles right and we should almost be done just a few more, I think. Last one. Is it? Probably. Oops, uh, I think I accidentally clicked the lock on. Alright, and we're done. Should be a S rank, I think. That should be fast enough, I believe. There we go. Oh, he's going for a lot of staggers. Um, dual handguns, the Huxley. That's just everything is filled with impact damage. So we kind of need to watch out here. Um, handguns have a pretty short ideal range. So we'll try to kite him and jump away. And we should be fine. For the laser drone, you kind of want to, you kind of want to use the charge version whenever possible, because you just do more damage and impact damage, and we really have the time with this build to charge up, and you know you you don't have much to manage, so use it use the charge version whenever possible. I think it works better on this build especially, because they they will have to worry about dodging a bunch of missiles in addition to the laser drones, so even if there's less individual attacks you know, it's still more worth it. Okay, I kind of screwed up there. I didn't charge my laser drone. But he's almost dead. We're still in the lead. We just need to make sure we finish kiting him and don't get caught at close range. Yep, there we go. Honestly, this just feels like, you know, it's it's less of a polarizing matchup than just going tetrapod and flying all the way to the top. If that was the case, his build probably has like no chance whatsoever. So yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Our laser drone, and we'll dodge. Technically, I can still, you know, fly up into the air, but I would want to, I want to show off more of the kiting with, um, this time's gameplay because you against opponents that are really strong at close range you can definitely still you know just play sort of like missile boats or like use the air to your advantage jump really high and you know the handguns don't really do much to you oops kind of got stuck there but I think that's a GG yep okay Zimmerman and he also has missiles. Okay, it's a very mixed build. We should be fine. Oh, uh, I forgot to swap back my headpiece to the barrels. I was checking something with this. Um, it's fine, I think we're okay. The hammerhead shark headpiece pretty much doesn't do much on this map. He's not trying to get close to us, which is his big mistake, because we definitely win 
if we just keep kiting around. I'm not even charging my laser drones at the moment, which I really should be doing honestly, but I want to show you guys the difference for this build at least. I think it's definitely more worth it to charge the laser drones here. But again, he really should be playing to his advantage, which is his Zimmermans at closer range. At this range, he really can't do much. We can also just you know, turn our screen a soul boost away because we're in free aim, so it's relatively easy to just spin away. He should really be charging me. He would have a chance at close range because of the Zimmerman's high impact. You see, I'm just eating the missiles, but he's, he still can't do much about it because his build is a bit too not focused. He wants to do a bit of range, a bit of um, close range. It's fine to have a mixed build, but you have to play to each part's strength and like, it depends on your enemy. So you have to act according to what your enemy is weak at and exploit it. Oh, he's finally trying to get closer to me, but as you see here, because of my optimized dodging, you can pretty much dodge once per 1.27 or so seconds. It can be very difficult for them to catch up. Ooh, kind of scary. A post setup on lightweight. I'm guessing he's going to do the hit and run tactic. I also have a pulse build myself and with the pulse weapon that has weaker cooling, the cooling is really slow so you kind of have to just completely use up your heat and then run away until you have enough energy to fight back again. Yep, he's okay. He assault boosted past me, but missiles have the longest range in game, so it's very easy to chip him. And we're gonna use our charge drone here. And yeah, he he wants to poke me with the pulse weapon, but he kind of sprayed too early. If he had waited a bit more, he might have gotten more damage in. But his idea, I'm pretty sure he's using VE20C and his idea is using the coral shield to get close while not taking too much damage and then using the pulse weapons at a close range to burst me down. Okay, um, he can definitely play better you can dodge the apparatus fairly easily with a lightweight build so he just has to make sure he takes less chip damage from my drones and my vertical plasma while dealing more damage to me it's going a bit better for him so far i would say uh, i should i really should have dodged a bit more over there i didn't jump enough but even though i landed He's trying to stick close to me, which is a good idea too, because pulse weapons have really high DPS, and it, it definitely out DPS is my setup. So if he can successfully stick to me, he can definitely burst me down. But unfortunately, we are very mobile with our reverse joints, so it's a bad matchup for him, honestly. Is that double trainos?
um, missile builds actually aren't that great with too much cover, and especially bad with large covers like huge buildings because missiles can you know easily run into these buildings, which is why I'm using the vertical plasma and the drones. The drones can still run into buildings and just die. So when you cast drones, make sure they're not you know they're not just straight up behind a building, so your drones don't act smartly enough. Like if you cast it here, your drones will still path well. But if you do it like too exaggerated, like straight up behind buildings, the drones won't have that good of a smart tracking. Anyways, the okay, okay, there's a big problem with this, which is um, I'm not too too familiar with this map while kiting backwards. It, I'm actually trying to fight in the more open area so I don't get stuck on the building because as you saw there, I nearly got stuck and against Zimmerman's setup with Trainos, he's gonna punish me super hard. I'll, I'll try to win this round and next round I'll see I'll see how I can do um, in a more compact setting. I'll try to go towards the buildings later. I'll let you see how missile builds performs then. Okay, I'll still start from here. Okay, see, definitely not a great idea. Nice combo. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely try not to get stuck on stuff on buildings. Honestly, the smarter play here, I want to try to cut him on the ground, but the smarter play here is honestly to just ascend. It's, it's kind of not too bright. Oh, getting a kick. Okay, that, this is definitely my fault. If I lose this, this is definitely my fault. Because if you if you want to win against a setup like this, it's I think it's better to just ascend and shoot missiles from a, up top. But yeah, I definitely should have ascended. That was definitely my bad play. Alright, let's try one more on the same map. And I'm gonna definitely try to go towards that circle where the area is more open. The circle is a perfect cover because your drones won't crash into the circle. They'll go over it, but you can still dodge bullets from the enemy. So it's a great cover. Your missiles will also do fairly well, you know, if you jump, if you shoot from up top. So it's all alright. And obviously the vertical missile performs really well in this kind of map. Alright, where is he? Great, I'm gonna hide behind cover now to let my stability recover. 
Okay, now he doesn't have the stability bead on us. We're definitely gonna try to fight in this area a bit more for there is more open space but we can also jump to cover when needed oh uh, I shouldn't have that was a bad pulse armor I didn't have any stability damage I don't think I think I was trying to respond <laughs> but yeah that was definitely a bad response you kind of want to use your pulse armor when you have more stability damage taken that was definitely a bad pulse armor on my part Once again, just enough open space, but still have the protection of cover, and... I'm gonna ascend to throw him off a bit, because he has been chasing me on black ground. Alright, this is definitely a GG. Nice, and there we go. Alright. Like and subscribe and see you guys next time. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.